So, you've all heard of composition. This is where we try and make pictures look good. What I want to talk about in this video, however, is the idea of micro composition. What is that? Um, how does it relate to making pictures? Why should you care? Micro composition, as I see it, is really where we handle the look and feel and the quality of a painting in the periphery. You can think of, you know, this picture that you're looking at, me sitting on a chair in my studio as an example. So you've got this outline, black background, check, done. Micro composition would be, you know, the subtleties of what's going on in the background. Are my fingers, you know, how are they sort of positioned? Is that giving us an optimum level of overlap? These are the things that are really just a fractal of overall composition, but beginners often overlook with their paintings. You need to do all of that stuff on the micro level as well. I think it's one of the most important and potentially underappreciated aspects of, you know, perfecting your artistic craft. What I want to do in this video, as I said, is unpack this idea a little bit, and I'll do that through showing you some of the artwork that I've created. We'll look at some art books and stuff that other people have created, and I'll just show you some examples of where this is happening. Hopefully so you can just sort of get aware of what it is. Think of this as a drawing lesson. We're just going to talk composition theory and specifically micro composition. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. If you'd like to learn more about line and color illustration, you can check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running quickly in Photoshop, developing your own simple, reliable line and color process. It's free. The link will be in the description. Go check it out. Something that's worth considering just before we jump over to the drawing table is that, again, the idea of sort of line work, you know, again, what I'm all about here is that, you know, often the, you know, subtle differences and, and, and positions of lines versus others is something that we consider micro composition. So, you know, there's often a really great rhythm that you see with great comic art, with great manga, where we have one line next to another. There's the rhythm of the strokes, the way they feel. This is where all of these strokes and little marks are considered in detail, on the fly, intuitively by the artist. And that is something you can work on. You can think about, you know, exactly where you place all these lines. Really what this session is going to be about is trying to bring this stuff to the surface, just so you can look at it in the world you can check out your favorite artists and try and see how they solve some of these problems. Anyway, first up, let's jump over to the drawing table and we'll just look at, you know, where this stuff appears in the real world. All right, here we are at the drawing table. Now, different artists are gonna handle this subject matter sort of differently, right? It's gonna be easy to see the same thing, however, happening again and again. What we're sort of talking about, and one of the things that you can sort of think of that, you know, needs development within your own work is, again, just the feeling and understanding of the work on the image in the periphery. So, again, here we've got some sort of Frazetta, sort of classic Frazetta imagery. Now, when your eye first hits this, you tend, you tend to be sort of drawn to the areas of focus. So compositionally, if we look at this again, amazing, great image, you know, one of my favorite sort of, you know, just like doing so much with so little, um, just sort of simple line, um, you know, and sort of tone work here. Um, you know, you look at the main character, you look at these characters here, right? You look at the main story, but you know, there's all this work in the periphery that, you know, makes this, you know, image really, really sing. It's, you know, the precise arrangement of all these little craters, right? There is a beauty, there is an artistry, there is purpose. Now, whether this is done consciously or subconsciously by the artist, I don't know. This is one of those things where I kind of say one of the great talents that people have is some times people are just better at this than others. This might be something where you're kind of like, yeah, you just kind of, you know, arrange all these little 
you know, circles in a nice way. Like, how hard is that? <laughs> Why aren't you doing that? Uh, for, for, for other people, you know, again, I, I include myself in that. You know, I, I was not that good at this stuff. You need to think about it. You need to think about rhythm, basic compositional ideas, right? Repeating shapes, um, variety, but also making sure there's sort of groups and patterns. There's a particular feeling of organicness here, right? Again, same thing with how many stars are there on the background right and and the shapes here the, the 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 sort of the the playfulness the feeling that like yes they do feel nebulous right they do have that vibe but you know they, they, they're also kind of playful and they're aggressive at the same time and the number of little holes in here right if you don't get all these little bits right then the bit in the middle doesn't sing quite as loudly and that really is the point of understanding that composition and choices and taste and all of these things are, are, are working at every level and it's often a matter of kind of studying these periphery elements in the art that you like in this image what you're looking at are you know all the little areas of overlap in the background and the foreground telling the story of depth the overlap of these you know sort of leaves and things in the foreground all of this stuff matters. Likewise, if we look at Robert McGuinness, another one of my favorite artists to kind of show because there's a great level of craft, but also artistry at work on the abstract and the structural level. You can see if you don't really need to go much past the cover to understand that, again, the overall composition is good, but we also need to look at where all these little rocks are placed, how they're kind of drawn, and all the little choices that would be made there, all the little micro decisions, what's overlapping what. Even if some of these things are based off photography, what you have to consider is how the artist is interpreting that photography. And this often is one of the, you know, the big things that, you know, people say, oh, you just copy the photo. It's like, yes, but the real artist will understand how to maximize what the photo has to offer and also then be able to work it into the entire image. So this is where, again, what we're often looking like, and I think these are great examples because they're, they're, you can tell that the way this has been created is a little bit more organic, right? This is kind of the, the olden day version of like a filter or, um, you know, photographic kind of, uh, you know, textural passes on something, right? Where you can see there's chemical oil, um, again, wh whatever technique he's sort of using there. I have no idea because I'm not a traditional painter, but again, what we're looking for are all these small decisions that your typical viewer completely doesn't consciously recognize. And most artists will kind of appreciate but what you need to do is to really understand it's all of these little things like how much texture goes here, how much texture goes in the foreground, the middle ground, the background, in the focal area. Where do we sublimate that detail? Where do we sort of push it forward? If we look at some manga, right, or comics, again, you can see very, very similar ideas at play. Here we've got Haraka Somura's Blade of the Immortal. You know, you're going to see a, a constant sort of level of, you know, needing to sort of manage these sort of background details and speed lines and little bits and pieces that are going to sort of make up how the overall sort of feeling of this work. There's the level of texture, there's the level of detail, there's what's overlapping what precisely how many bits of hair are in front how many bits of hair are behind exactly how does all of this work let me find another good page uh, example here again I don't want to flip through this because some of this stuff can be quite um, aggressive and uh, not really safe for work or YouTube all right a few other sort of examples here Samara's work is so sort of kinetic and sketchy what we really have to look at again and, and what I you know get yourself trained to look at are all these little peripheral areas and see how again you are able to handle these other areas in your art it's often these subtle um little other areas that you know again you're not seeing as the main part of the action but all of the ways that the speed lines are handled the amount of little sort of marks that are put here and there that again are obviously going to reinforce the main action but what 
this may seem like is chaos, right? Because there is an organized chaos to a lot of this work, a feeling of aggression and sort of rawness to, you know, a lot of the, the, the story and the manga in general. But, you know, I, I would sort of say that either subconsciously or consciously, there is a method to that madness. And there's a way that, again, if you want to get the sim a similar effect, you can sort of look at how those things are kind of organized and appreciate that if your work doesn't have that same level of sort of vibrancy of the image being full of movement and life and energy, it can often actually be due to just all of these little overlaps and just not quite putting in all of these things that make it feel like there's life on the page. If we look at some classic Dragon Ball, we can often see, again, similar things at work. Handled completely differently because, again, the style is completely different, different concerns. But notice how we are often dealing with a sense of overlap, smaller areas where you have one thing overlapping another. You have, you know, little sort of trees. You've got houses going in front of one. Or again, you know, often where this will really come into play is if you're drawing scenes with multiple characters like this, where you have to consider how all these little bits and pieces kind of overlap each other. I can tell you from experience that, you know, making it look this nice doesn't always just happen by itself. It's something that you need to build both as an element of your taste and also just by understanding that, you know, you do often have to redraw and fiddle around, get all of those things in the right spot. You know, especially in the beginning where maybe your initial instinct is not right. If we look at Heo Miyazaki's original Nausicaa manga, no surprise, Miyazaki is, you know, in my opinion, one of the best artists that, you know, we've ever had. You can see that there's a great handling of all of these little sort of micro details, the subtleties, the overlaps, how one thing overlaps another, how, again, there's just a good balance of the number of things that we have on the page, right? We've got these little kind of insecty guys, right? We've got these big sort of warrior guys, and then you've got Nausicaa, you know, in the foreground. And it's the, you know, basic composition, not of just the main characters, but the secondary ones that's really important to play, to pay attention to. How many of these little, you know, guys are there, right? You know, what are they doing? There's a rhythm to that. There's a pattern to that, that, are, that sort of will make it feel like it needs to feel. Not to mention, again, all of the other, you know, sort of great compositional things that are happening here. This manga is really, really just crazy with the level of detail and the fidelity that is going on. You know, just the, the feeling that, you know, this really just does feel like a, a movie, right? Even more epic than the, the, the anime that got made. Um, you know, there's just so many sort of shots here that are sort of so epic. Um, but again, you know, look at the, the sort of overlap here, right? The sense of overlap, of exploding, right? Of the patterns, um, you know, of the, of the translated uh, special effects that, you know, I'm not a huge fan of um, at all. Good if that was just original. But uh, anyway, you know, you can, you can see that, again, there's just a nice sense of all these little details, even to the point where we're just looking at, you know, the sense of overlap of all of these panels of this sort of giant sort of airship thing and the way that it will explode, right? All of the different little, you know, bits, just thinking about this. So the point here, as I have said, is to make sure you understand that in the beginning, in the thumbnailing process, you draw the big shapes, they are the most important. Get your primary forms, get your primary read working. But the thing that you often spend the most time doing is drawing the hundred people falling out of the plane, making them, you know, overlap in a nice way. And that that is almost more important than the major composition because it's what you spend the most time doing. Right, so I'm just going to jump over to Photoshop quickly so I can show you some of the work that I've done because that, I guess, allows me to explain my thought process better. Because again, I did it, so I know the thought behind it. And I know what was intentional and what was just kind of me noodling around. So this is an image that, uh, again, is part of my online course, the Line and Color Academy. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons I did this, again, is to sort of describe some of these issues of micro-composition an overlap. So, um, you know, one of the things here that I guess is so important when you're trying to pro portray a sense of complexity, just making sure that there are a nice set of overlaps between the foreground, the middle ground and the background, and also to just sort of handle those areas of rest. So, you know, a good example would be just how we're drawing tree roots. So if we kind of zoom up here, right, look at this kind of area, you can see these, um, you know, there's a couple of different elements 
there's the main tree trunk and then there's these kind of smaller roots that are coming off it and then there are just little blades of grass We've got this weird sort of plant here goal is just to arrange these in a relatively sort of interesting way i guess and that's where this can be sort of you know really really important to to get your head around and this is something that i've noticed i spend a lot of time on and uh, I, I feel like when i was really beginning i didn't quite understand how important it was or it sort of felt like busy work but the point here is that there's good work to be done here another area would be both the background here where again i'm trying to sort of overlap these and give a sense of sort of randomness and um you know sort of interest there but also i'm paying as, as much attention I, as i can to how the areas of the foreground are interacting with that or the middle ground in this case so again middle ground in this case is this character and what we're trying to pay attention to are the micro compositional elements where we're trying to manage and control tangents i.e right where something is overlapping something else like that and the the key here is just make sure we don't create confusion so i've got one of these sort of little bugs right and that's creating a nice sort of silhouette pop there but there's nothing kind of behind it i have some overlap of this kind of little you know fresh tree thing coming up here and that's kind of going over these things here and again it's how these things overlap that are important we could also consider all of these trees, which again, in this demo, I actually kind of ended up having to redo. I just didn't feel the micro composition and the feeling of complexity there of that foreground of leaves, even though they all kind of just basically turn to, um, to dark, you know, it doesn't really matter. But again, to me, it's one of the things that, that really makes a difference. Um, and, and, and it sort of means that again, a year later, I can look at it and kind of go like, oh yeah, that, that kind of worked as opposed to just kind of, you know, doing the, the, the basic job. So again, here it's a matter of sort of showing depth with those trees in the foreground and also, you know, making sure that the way they overlap the things in the middle ground and the background is kind of pleasing. I, there's no weird tangents. Um, but also just the rhythm, the number of leaves, how the leaves overlap each other, are there too many, not enough. And again, if you see me doing this demo um, in that course, you can see that again, that, that is a mix of intuition, right? Of being like, oh, okay, I'm just drawing leaves. And every now and then I'll just kind of stop and be like, you sort of zoom out and you're just like, look, there's, there's a bit too many leaves here and not enough here. This shape feels like it's a repetition of this shape let's just erase that let's put a few more here i need a few more kind of extra leaves as a silhouette pop here you know um this area over here just feels like it's too busy um you know this is drawing too much attention so it's all those little decisions that you make that i think are, are so important and it's it's really it's not it's not something that i'm assuming you don't you don't you're not aware of but i guess what i'm saying here is that the time you spend there when you're actually working on the image um is really worth it and it's worth it for a number of reasons. So that's kind of what the image looks like um, in the end. Uh, this one, which is the flat version of it, sort of allows us to see some of these areas a little bit better. So this is just to appreciate that not just is this something that you know you have to do, right? Because you have to kind of compose all these little areas and, and sort of make sure, oh, this is overlapping this, right? But I think that the more you kind of spend here, right? Like honestly, it's it's time well spent because you're actually building that thing that i said could be a talent where you know some people are just good at this some people you just give them like you know 10 beads right you give them a whole bunch of shapes and things you say like put them on a table and they'll just magically arrange those things and you'll be like that just looks nice and some people can't right some people it's a learnt skill um i don't know why um it just is now, I think one of the ways that we intuitively build this skill is again, through just working on these micro compositional elements, right? How many leaves, where are the leaves? Do they overlap? Are they overlapping too much? Is this developing, you know, the right shape language, wrong shape language, right? When you're drawing these leaves, there, there, there's a sense to where, again, I'm abstracting these shapes and I actually need to repeat the shape because repetition of shape is a compositional element. It's something that we enjoy as humans to look at the same shape repeated. But if you repeat them too much, it feels uniform. And nature is a mix of these systems of sort of uniformity or repetition, but there's logic to it. So you're both trying to create abstract repetition, which is interesting. You're trying to think about 
how do leaves actually go, right? How do they grow? <laughs> What's the logic behind it? You know, that, that can be a thing that will make it look, look wrong. And then you're thinking, am I, is there too much detail in that area of the image versus somewhere else, right? I think this is where you, you really have to just sort of look at the, the gestalt of it and understand that these decisions you're making at this point in time are, you know, for, in, in my experience, really, really critical, right? They're super, super important for you to understand and, and get right. And it's worth spending time here studying other people's art and just understanding that even though it can be frustrating, it feels like, oh man, do I have to redraw all those leaves on that tree? Yes, but that's learning. We're building those muscles. We're getting better at these things. And over time, this is what will not just improve these subtle areas and background elements of your art, but it'll improve your overall composition as well. It'll improve everything. So anyway, that's all I've got for this one. Just a, a little sort of talk on the idea of composition, micro composition, how it might relate to your artistic journey. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, comments, ideas, things we could make into future videos things you might want to share with the rest of us in the comments. I'll see you down there. Other than that, I'll catch you around. Happy drawing.